Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Good morning. Uh, this is a, uh, a Viper Keeper Speaks sort of segment. Sort of a special... Uh, some rather urgent and important uh, news that affects everyone in the United States who keeps animals other than your traditional uh, dog and cat. Uh, it's part of the a bill in Congress right now, which was passed at the, by the House yesterday and will probably be passed by the Senate will incorporate some modifications to the Lacey Act. Now USARC, and I'll put the, uh, their, their web address, uh, beat back a Lacey Act change a few years back. A federal court reversed it and uh, nulled uh, their abilities to limit the interstate uh, commerce of large constrictors. Well, now Congress has given U.S. Fish and Wildlife the go-ahead to restrict not only importation of animals which Fish and Wildlife deemed dangerous or hazardous, but also interstate transport. So let's say you're keeping tarantulas or centipedes or scorpions, uh, snakes, lizards, um, virtually any animal that you can think of other than a cat or a dog or a horse uh, and probably some other farm animals. It will be a federal felony for you to transport those animals across state lines. So you can just kiss, kiss goodbye every reptile show for the most part, uh, every invertebrate show, or anything uh, out of the norm. Uh, this is a vast overreach by our government. Uh, it will destroy a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, not only will we not be able to import these animals from their native countries, but we won't be able to, you know, trade or sell or anything like that uh, across state lines. So if you live in uh, New Jersey and you have a friend who wants to buy some of your baby tarantulas or some of your snakes or lizards, in New York. Damn spam calls. This is another government problem. Uh, you will not be able to legally transport them across state lines. Now, you have to admit, uh, for the most part, um, person to person transfers will be virtually impossible to stop and enforce. Uh, however, there will be probably federal agents uh, at these shows and they'll be watching very carefully. This isn't just a misdemeanor. This is a felony conviction if they can convict you. So this is a big deal. This not only affects the, the people that breed and, and sell, you know, animals outside of the normal pet industry, but they also destroy companies that provide feeders, bedding, substrate, cages, you, you name it. All the things in the entire industry are going to come crashing down.
people are going to be unemployed, they're going to lose whatever extra money they're, they're obtaining through these activities. Um, this is very bad for the economy. It's very bad for people. You know, people enjoy keeping and breeding and trading and selling these animals, and um, this is a vast government overreach. So I will put below a, a link to the USARC site. I suggest that you uh, contact your senators, since it's too late in Congress, uh, in the House of Representatives, to do anything because they already passed it. And there are some form letters on their site that you can submit to your senator. And you need to do this immediately. That's why I'm putting this out as a bulletin. Um, it probably won't do any good. And USARC will have to fight it again in court and hopefully prevail. Uh, so you should contribute to USARC and uh, help them... Uh, you know, battle the federal government's overreach into our lives. Okay, so that's, that's the urgent news. Uh, the not-so-urgent news is I want to have a discussion about mm, several questions and such that uh, I've been receiving uh, on the channel. Um, and number one is Elvis. Elvis is permanently off exhibit because he's become way too dangerous to handle and film and stay out of his way. He's about 14 feet and rather belligerent these days and is in a separate room and a, a cage, an enclosure that I built, which has a separator, also called a shift box. So when he's on one side of the cage, I can close it and isolate him, toss in his food, clean up that half of the cage, and then when he goes to that end of the cage to feed, I can close the divider again and clean the other half or change water dish or stuff. So you will never see a, a video of Elvis again, unfortunately, because he can't be safely you know, viewed and videotaped. He's basically in solitary confinement, uh, and Lori and I have decided that uh, we are going to uh, find a home at a zoo uh, for Elvis where he can receive the proper care and uh, have a little bit more space than we can provide. This is the problem with keeping king cobras is they're cute and adorable when they're a foot long, but when they get to 14 feet, they're a bit problematic. Another thing that I would like to address is uh, uh, people insulting my intelligence. Uh, when I make a remark that uh, we're limiting our contact uh, with the animals due to the hospitals being overwhelmed with COVID. Uh, there are some fools out there uh, that are making the remarks that, you know, I'm falling into the conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can believe whatever you want to believe. I have no problem with that. However, I've been in the medical sciences my entire adult life working at prestigious medical universities, medical schools, doing clinical pathology and laboratory work, as well as research. Um, uh, I believe in the science. I don't believe in the BS that you see on Facebook with all these experts and you know, all the news media reports. I rely on science. I always have, I always will. You can believe what you want to believe, but don't insult my intelligence just because my belief is different than yours. Uh, you're entitled to yours, I'm entitled to mine. And finally, I'd like to thank the, all the people uh, who have stuck with me over the years and uh, still visit my YouTube channel uh, watching the programming. Now, it's true, I've shortened the programming. And the reason why I've shortened the programming is simply because 
I uh, get weekly reports from Google and I can watch uh, the metrics on which video is watched and how long it's watched. I used to make on a regular basis 20 minute videos and those 20 minute videos typically were watched only about half or less of the entire length of the video. So why should I spend uh, lots of time preparing a 20 minute video when most of the time less than half of the video is being watched. So Lori and I made the decision to cut the videos typically back to 12 minutes. Even the mix bag, like the January mix bag of 22, that was only watched 46% of the way through. The rest of the video went unwatched. Um, that's just the way it is. Also, YouTube has changed the, the metrics um, on how you get paid. The longer you watch, then the more chance of revenue that you get. Uh, also, YouTube doesn't always make my videos appear in your feed, even though you've liked and subscribed and clicked all. Um, it doesn't happen. I've produced at least one video a week. Every Friday goes live at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, since 2006. July of 2006, I haven't missed a single video every Friday since then. I have over 987 videos live in my catalog. So if you don't see it in your feed on a weekly basis, uh, you'll just have to go search out my channel and see the, the latest video. But yes, I produce content. Um, it's easier for me to produce shorter videos because uh, throughout the, you know, the years, uh, I be, I've become higher in management uh, at the company I work for, uh, a lot more laboratory work. I work 60 hours a week. I travel about 40% of the year, so I'm away from the animals. So I spend my entire weekend with Lori uh, caring for the animals. So if the cages aren't quite up to snuff, it's either because uh, I haven't gotten to them, uh, because I've been away, um, or uh, in some cases, I'm not willing to risk working with that particular animal on a regular basis um, because of the hospitals being clogged with uh, COVID patients, uh, whereas I have friends who are emergency room physicians, I have friends who are ambulance and paramedic people, and they say they're lining up in the halls and patients are not see, being seen on a timely basis. It's truly a very bad time to present at the emergency room with an exotic snake bite. It's even a bad time to show up at the emergency room with a domestic snake bite. Uh, I know, I run national snake bite support uh, with three emergency room physicians, snake bite experts, uh, veterinary uh, medicine doctors, um, all this has been a problem for them uh, treating and caring for uh, snake bite uh, victims. So that's a quick update from the Lair here. Uh, again, thanks for everybody who's stuck with me over the years. I continue to uh, produce videos on a weekly basis. Uh, I am downsizing my collection, uh, rehoming a lot of the larger, more dangerous snakes, uh, uh, partially because antivenin is expensive and because most of these laboratories have switched their production schedules, antivenin has become very difficult to obtain. I just uh, spent $2,000 on antivenin to cover the Trimasaurus insularis behind me, the Trimasaurus paniseus, 
the Russell's Vipers, uh, any of the Protobothrops or Trimasaurus I have. Um, that was a fresh supply of antivenin. That took me a year and a half to obtain from Thailand, plus the $2,000 in costs. So if I seem a little bit more cautious and I'm not taking animals out of the cage and working with them, uh, my safety uh, and Lori's safety has the highest priority, not providing exciting content uh, for YouTube. So please take that in, into account. Lastly, uh, I would like to thank the people that went to the viperkeeper.com site and donated a few dollars to help support the lair and my content. So everybody take care, be safe, and every Friday there's a new video. Sometimes you just have to look for it because YouTube is not going to uh, present it to you. It doesn't even put content up that I want to see from other people. I have to go seek it out. Again, take care. Be safe. See you on the next video.